Good evening, everyone, and welcome back once again to Answers on Eschatology. My name is Dan Derry, and I'm the president of the Institute of Fulfilled Eschatology. So we are in the middle of a study on Matthew 24, and I want to take an, another look at verse 29 today. And I know we I said that we were going to get into the actual um, apocalyptic and prophetic language uh, of, of the stars falling from heaven, the moon not giving us light, etc. But I want to do one more video um, on the time element of the text, okay? I want to really, really drive this home that these this metaphorical language in verse 29 must fit, okay? Our interpretation of it must fit a first century context, okay? We already demonstrated to you that the great tribulation, okay, that would that would occur immediately preceding these cosmic events was the first century great tribulation. Okay, and we demonstrated that by Matthew 24, Mark 13, and Daniel 12. All of those texts, not to mention Luke 21, which we didn't even get into, but, but all of those texts place the, the, the Great Tribulation, Israel's time of distress, Daniel 12, 1, in the first century. Now, how I want to really, really drive this point home is I want to take a look in this video at the word immediately that Jesus uses in Matthew 24, 29. It is the Greek word eutheos, and it is used 35 times in the, New, in the New Testament. And in every single instance, it cannot mean a long time. It cannot mean beyond a generation. And it always, it always means immediately, right away, or shortly to, to take place, okay? It has an immediate, pun intended, definition attached to it. And what I want to do in this video is I want to simply compare a few uh, scriptures in the New Testament uh, and, and demonstrate that eutheos does mean immediately, okay? We want to show you how it's used elsewhere in the New Testament and demonstrate that we have a biblical precedent for understanding it that way in Matthew 24 and 29. So let's take a look at a few texts. Go with me first to Matthew chapter 4 and we'll look at verse verses... Um, 19 and 20. And he said to them, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. Did the disciples take a long time? Did they delay? Did they hum and haw and wait a couple weeks? Or did they drop their nets and follow him right away? Well, we all know the answer. Luke chapter 5, let's look at another one. And verse 13, and maybe we'll read uh, the verse before. Let's read verse 12 and 13. While he was in one of the cities, behold, there was a man covered with leprosy. And when he saw Jesus, he fell on his face and implored him, saying, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. And he stretched out his hand and touched him, saying, I am willing, be cleansed. And immediately the leprosy left him. Listen, did that take a long time? Was it a slow process of healing and, you know, sores falling off? And, and no, leprosy left him immediately okay because look at the next verse jesus says go your way and show yourself to the priest and make the, uh, an offering for your cleansing just as moses commanded see unless he was healed immediately he couldn't go right away and make that offering for his cleansing okay let's look at another one john chapter 5 and verses 8 and 9 jesus said to him get up pick up your pallet and walk and immediately the man became well etc was this a slow process of healing? Did he have some crutches, take a while, you know, get get a strength back? Or did he pop up right away and walk? We know the answer. Eutheos means immediately. So listen, when we get to Matthew 24, why do futurists make this, this cosmic destruction, right? The, the falling of the stars, the darkening of the sun, etc., to be thousands of years divorced from the Great Tribulation, of the first century. Now listen, I know most of them will place the Great Tribulation in our future, so they don't have to do that, but that won't work. That's an impossibility based upon Scripture. And eutheos immediately means immediately. It means right away. Now, what I want to do, go with me to Luke chapter 21, obviously a parallel, parallel discourse to Matthew 24, and I want to show you how the disciples and how Jesus used eutheos in the very context of Matthew 24, 29. Okay, so watch this. Luke 21, and let's read verse, let's read for the context's sake, verses five to nine. 
And while some were talking about the temple, that it was adorned with beautiful stones and votive gifts, he said, As for these things which you are looking at, the days will come in which there will not be one stone left upon another which will not be thrown down. They questioned him, saying, Teacher, when therefore will these things happen, and what will be the sign when these things are about to take place? And he said to them, See to it that you are not misled, for many will come in my name, saying, I, I am he, and the time is near. Do not go after them. When you hear wars and disturbances, do not be afraid, for these things must take place first, but the end does not follow immediately. Euthaios. Now listen, did Jesus expect his disciples to understand immediately to mean, hey, listen, when you see all these things taking place, hey, don't worry because the end, the end is not 2,000 years away. The end, guys, when you see these things taking place, hey, don't worry, don't be afraid because the end's not for your lifetime. No. They, he understood that they, would, they might mistake these events as signs of an imminent of an immediate end. And he, Jesus warned against that. Eutheos, in the context of Matthew 24, 29, obviously in the parallel uh, discourse of Luke 21, means immediately. That's exactly how Jesus meant it in Matthew 24, 29. So here's what I want to close on. And this will set us up for our next video in which I promise we will get into the language itself of Matthew 24, 29. When Jesus said to his disciples in verse 29 of Matthew 24, but immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened, the moon will not give its light, and the stars will fall from heavens, and the power of the heavens will be shaken. He was referring to something beyond those words, okay? All of, all of that language is number one taken from the Old Testament scriptures. And it speaks, it refers, and it it signifies something greater than itself. So, he, so here's the thing. Jesus was using uh, language of an earthly cosmic destruction to signify something that would happen in the heavenlies, something that would happen in the unseen realm. And we can look at it like this. Jesus predicted the end of the world with this language. And guess what? He did just not as futurists interpret the end of the world. See, these stars, sun, moon signified they meant nations, powers, authorities, and the, the great tribulation, the culmination of that great tribulation would mean the end of, of a covenant world, the end of a power and an authority that had been given, that had been in effect but would culminate and would terminate in the fall of Jerusalem in AD 70. And we will get into all that next video on Answers on Eschatology. Don't miss it. Bye for now.